Our next talk will be continuing on the ocular surface, ocular surface tumors by Carol Karp of the faculty here at Bascom Palmer. They'll automatically get that story. Thank you. Well, it's an honor to be part of the faculty here and a part of the celebration, and I thank everyone for coming to be here to celebrate with us. And uh, today I'd like to share with you one of my favorite topics, which is discussing the management of ocular surface squamous neoplasia. So I have no financial interest in what we'll be discussing, but I will be talking about off-label use of approved medications. And my most important disclosure is that every good project idea I've ever had was because my friends and colleagues here gave me the idea and encouraged me um, and supported me to do something. So we'll start with a case of a 91-year-old gentleman who comes in with this large lesion in his limbus and um, referred for evaluation. It was involving 270 degrees of his limbus. So the question is, do we do an extensive excision, put him at risk for limbal stem cell deficiency, or do we choose something else? So we elected to treat him with topical interferon eye drops, one million international units, uh, four times a day, for three months continuously, and he had beautiful resolution. So ocular surface squamous neoplasia is now the umbrella term, OSSN, of conjunctival intraepithelial neoplasia and squamous cell carcinoma of the conjunctiva. Um, it has gelatinous, papillary, opalescent, and leukoplakic appearances, and the putative risk factors are UV light exposure, HPV, and HIV. The mainstay of treatment is excision with cryotherapy, but now mitomycin, 5-FU, and interferon have gained increased popularity in the treatment of this tumor. The advantages of surgery is that it provides quick resolution, it's diagnostic and therapeutic, and being the gold standard is easily covered by insurers. The downside is recurrence rates because of microscopic disease that's left over, and ex extensive excisions can lead to limbal stem cell deficiency, as you see here. My technique is a no-touch wide excision with cryotherapy. I take wide margins of at least four millimeters. I orient it on a filter paper, as Sandra DeBovey has taught me, outlining it in pencil because the ink dissolves, alcohol epithelectomy, sclerectomy if necessary, a double freeze slow thaw technique, and amniotic membrane for ocular surface reconstruction. The problem with surgery is, is it's, for example, in this case, you see that there's a tumor here on the cornea, and we know it comes from the limbus, but we can't see any tumor cells here. So when you're gonna excise, you don't know exactly where to go. So medical therapy has the advantage then of treating the entire ocular surface, treating then microscopic and subclinical disease. And it's especially helpful in recurrent annular corneal disease or diffuse disease. So we're gonna talk about mitomycin, 5-FU, and interferon. Mitomycin I use in 0.04%. I use it four times a day for a week, and then give them two, three weeks off, whatever it takes for them to heal. Um, it does cost about 225 um, a month per cycle a month and uh, requires compounding. Many series have shown success and it's even used, can be used intraoperatively as an adjunct. This is a patient I treated with mitomycin who had a predominantly just a corneal lesion, nothing seen here at the limbus, and had a nice result after three cycles of uh, one week mitomycin. Mitomycin is painful. It is not kind, it causes a corneal epitheliopathy. This is a patient I saw on Tuesday. And as my fellows and residents know, I call mitomycin the gota del diablo, which is the devil drop. 5-FU <laughs> also is very effective for OSSN. Um, it's less expensive and more stable. I use it four times a day for a week, and then again, I usually give them three weeks off and then recycle. Um, it's my second favorite next to uh, interferon. This is a patient who I treated. Here is a lesion mostly on the cornea and had nice resolution after three cycles of the 5-FU. So 5-FU is also quite toxic. It's painful but not as bad. I called 5-FU Gota del Asistente del Diablo, which is the assistant devil drop. And... Um, Interferon is really my favorite way to treat these tumors now. These are a group of low molecular weight glycoproteins that have both antiviral and anti-neoplastic properties. As you may know, it's used in other parts of the body, hairy cell leukemia, condyloma, which is HPV, chronic hepatitis B and C, Kaposi's, and other um, tumors. 
So some of you know my interferon story, which started in 1994. Sharing Plow was doing a study on hepatitis B and C to get it approved, and they needed an ophthalmologist to see all the patients on the study site for hepatitis. I had just started on the faculty and was elected uh, to do this. So I knew nothing about interferon, but I started to learn that mm, it works on viruses like HPV, and it works on cancers. And it had been recently published then that it was injected into the uterine cervix for cervical intraepithelial neoplasia. Steve Maskin, one of the prior fellows, had published a case report on this. And I was standing in the pod and I was saying, I, I, I wonder if this might work if we inject it around an OSSN tumor. And Dick Forster was there and he said to me, Carol, you really ought to try it. So from that, we made a protocol approved by the IRB, and what's come of that is that topical interferon used continuously as eye drops or injected is very effective in the treatment of OSSN. This is a patient that has a gelatinous lesion, was treated continuously, this is given every day, and had a beautiful resolution in four months. Another patient that was treated with the eye drops every day for three months and had a very nice resolution. And this is a patient that I injected. I do now once a week injections and had nice resolution of the tumor. In summary, for me, my decision tree is, is that if there's no compliance issues, then I generally treat with interferon four times a day. I have them use it every day until the tumor is gone, plus another month. The advantages of using interferon is that it's very gentle and kind. There's no side effects and it's really the angel drop. The downside is that it does need to be used every single day. It needs refrigeration and compounding like the other drops. If I feel that they're not compliant, then I choose injections um, or in subconjunctivally. I order an 18 million unit multi-dose vial. I give this weekly. And what I like about it is that it's insured compliance. It doesn't need any compounding. They can get it at CVS. And when I order 18 million units, then I have six injections available. The injections do give patients a flu-like syndrome where they get fevers and malaise where they need to use Tylenol in the first six to eight hours after the uh, injections. And if interferon is not successful, then 5-FU, mitomycin, or excision are options. So taking this to another level, what could make medical therapy better? Well, I'd like to know if the lesion is an OSSN without having to do a tissue biopsy. And then when I'm treating them, I'd like to be sure that the tumor is gone when I stop my treatment. So I need a magic genie, and I got one. My genie is the ultra-high resolution OCT. This is a custom-built spectral domain um, OCT by Jay Wang here, and it has a resolution of about two microns. And we use it to image the tumor before, during, and after treatment. So here's a funny little lesion that you can see here on the cornea, and I wonder, okay, is this, is this a CIN? Is the conjunctiva okay? Is this a panis? Well, when you do the ultra-high-res OCT, this is normal, thin epithelium of the, of the cornea, and then you see an abrupt transition with thickened, hyper-reflective epithelium, and this is OSSN. And so here's the histopath of the same patient where you see an incredible correlation with the ultra-high-res OCT. This is the patient that I showed you earlier with the gelatinous lesion, the OCT showing thickened epithelium correlating with his past specimen. And then after four months of treatment where there's resolution, you see thin epithelium and the post-treatment biopsy um, in this study. Here is a patient that has kind of a funny-looking lesion, and you wonder whether this is neoplastic or is it just panis and scarring. So in this case, the ultra-high resolution again showed an abrupt transition with thickened epithelium that was hyper-reflective, and we found that this is consistent with OSSN as opposed to scar, which looks very different and thin. So I treated this patient medically with uh, uh, interferon, and I thought looked pretty darn good right here, but when I did the OCT then after two months of treatment, then this was still residual thickening and hyper-reflectivity. So I treated again for another two months, again looks good clinically, and then finally the epithelium was totally normal. So the OCT helped me prevent a premature termination of the medication. So this has really changed the way I practice um, ocular surface oncology. I can diagnose subtle lesions and also see when the tumor is gone. 
In summary then, excision with cryotherapy is successful but can lead to residual disease. Mitomycin 5-FU and interferon are useful alternatives in the treatment of the disease and new imaging techniques can help us um, treat these subtle lesions. A special thanks to my cornea colleagues and Dr. Debovi, the pathology fellows, my past residence fellows and current who help me and teach me every day. Thank you all for your attention.